at least the discussion. I think that uh, the subject matter is of extreme urgency for the party as it is for the mass movement itself. Generally, but it also uh, have a very special part and it will be so reflected in our this afternoon about triple concentration. What we will say here uh, more concretely will have certain influences on the work of our party as a whole. But it is not intended to be those kinds of remarks. I think that we are late in uh, raising this question at this time because of the pressures that exist internally as well as externally for our party as it relates to the class struggle in general. But class struggle as it affects the national and racial question in particular. And I think that in the conditions of the United States, no greater error can be made than to try to sever the class aspect of matters from the national and racial aspect of the question. To do so would be a disservice to either and to weaken the total fight against the class enemy. Monopoly in general and its most reactionary ultra-right wing as is expressed in the military industrial complex in particular. And since you're dealing with an enemy that cannot be defeated by any single group in this country, for instance, by Afro-Americans alone, by labor alone, by the peace movement alone, Ways and means must be devised to find those means by which you can trounce this enemy. And before the party is the task of understanding itself and the primacy of the task of building the party as a precondition for moving to effect those kind of alliances that can move the all people front developments within the country. To understand the party correctly then, to understand anything is that the fight for its building is first of all the fight without which it is impossible to build to develop the broadest kind of unity and struggle beginning with the labor movement 
First of all, the organized labor movement, but the unorganized as well. And in the concrete conditions of the United States, the pivot around which any progress of a permanent character is dependent is that of labor after a line. Not to see this or not to see anything of a progressive character in the struggle against monopoly in the United States today. I deliberately put the question in this way because this is the opportunity to challenge it. And we are in a race against time. <clears throat> time waits for no one. Big decisions at stake. And we have the very fortunate experience of being members and leaders of the only force in this country which can affect that kind of change that can advance the cause of our class and our people. The party is the only instrument that we can use to resolve questions that can advance the anti-monopoly struggle, taking into account all of the intermediary steps needed to bring that into being. Widen the fight for democracy and in the course of it, build the Communist Party. Recruit into the Communist Party. Recruit on the basis of struggle. And that's what we are all about. Now, it is not my task here today to speak in general terms or about general problems. Only as it affects the problems of uh, the advance in the struggle of an aspect of this class problem. To build the party in the course of it, and I submit that all of the objective conditions are present, not only for building the mass movement, but for building the party itself as a simultaneous process in the next period of history. So, you can understand my text. Therefore, Cameron, we have been discussing over a long period. The truth is, ever since Milwaukee, the time when the concept of all people's front was thrown out. <laughs> the question of party building. But we note a very important fact that there's a contradiction between party growth and the Massive movement of struggle among Afro Americans. We are called upon to explain this contradiction. And this is all the more necessary now because of a whole series of events, including. The overall decline of the labor movement.
which arises out of structural changes, structural crisis, regular uh, cyclical movement, the introduction of new technology and all of this, and this decline hits sharpest black workers. What to do under circumstances like this? What program are we advancing for our party? to help our party meet in this moment. It is clear that much is needed on this front to meet a situation in which area by area a problem is arises in which black youth no that's not black people are facing a situation in which conditions are being created to treat them as social pariahs without any perspective of entering industry, a livelihood. And this takes side, place side by side with an offensive, unprecedented in U.S. life. the Reagan administration in which the proposition is put. Take government out of this whole business. Let private industry do it. What is being saying here is saying here by Reagan. He's saying, in effect, that the advances made by labor and the people through sweat and blood, jailing, murders, on picket lines, all of these gains should be erased. And once again, return to the days preceding the Wagner. But what does that mean on the present day conditions? I think this is something to think about. This affects not only the economic status of black folk, not only the political status of black folk, not only the social status of black folk, but it represents in perspective the crudest form of racist rule in the United States is in this situation that we put the question of triple concentration and its importance. Now, what do we mean by triple concentration? By triple concentration, We are saying that this is the 
very essence of the struggle for equality. An equality that is fought for, which is a precondition for raising the level of the whole class to advance. Now, in this connection, the question of racism, I think, needs certain clarification need a certain understanding by communists. I do not feel that it is always clear when we talk racism. We understand the class essence of racism. By that I mean it's not one thing, but two things at once. For monopoly, racism represents a unity for them of exploitation and national oppression. For the purpose of higher, higher profits. But what would it mean if, say, the working class in the fight against monopoly would sever the relationship between the two, the oneness of the two, will play directly into the hands of the explorer, the oppressor. fight against racism is, on the one hand, a special fight to depress the position of black workers and black people in general. But on the other hand, to use white workers in this whole scheme of things, all for the benefit of the exploiter. You're not fighting racism when you only see one aspect of this fight. You're fighting racism only when you see the double aspect of the whole problem. And the fight against it is at one time a struggle for the unity of the working class on a class basis, a unity which is possible only to the extent that you take into account the special problem, the denial of black workers and black people. There's a certain dialectical approach the white worker must understand that to the degree that he accepts and is influenced by racism, whether in the realm of ideology or practice, serves not his class interest. Nor is he doing a favor to black workers <clears throat> by changing this, that, or the other. The labor movement, organized and unorganized, has class aims, class objectives, which is attainable only by class unity, equality. And the fight for this equality is not helping some poor black over here. It is a fight for the unity of the whole class. But on the other hand, one could argue in reverse that the answer to inequality 
likewise is a contribution not only to the advance of the cause of black liberation, but a contribution to the struggle for the unity of the whole. We need much, much steady, much more clarity. If there ever was a single thought that was important in class struggle today, it is this process. So the answer to the question of class versus race, or race versus class, or class versus nation, is it seems to me quite clear. It's answered by this Marxist, Leninist, class approach to all questions of struggle for equality. Now, I think that for communists, without this understanding, there might be a lot of rhetoric. There may be a lot of loud talk about equality, but it's not yet a struggle for equality. It has meaning only when it is anchored in the spirit of proletarian international. Now, you see, all questions have been battled out on the front of seniority. Etc. 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 Affirmative action. Can it be said that all questions uh, have been cleared on this kind of thing? I think we have much, much to go, and we have to move with haste, with speed. We got to put an end to trying to take yesterday's solution in today's, for today's problem. Now, I would like to put this question. I don't think it takes much argument uh, to prove that private industry can't handle this question. Everyone would agree. Even to put this question is already to see growing slums, already to see the question of eviction, already to see the question of drugs, already to see... No. The problem is a class one. And we must see that the only way under these conditions is not private industry. But governmental responsibility to solve these social problems, these economic problems. And Hayesville, I said it, and uh, all of these other I said it urbanly. I said it in AACP approach to these problems. One fine force with all of these and yet all of them are contributory to a progressive uh, development. But communists are not tailored. Communists must support everything progressive, but will never fall victims of the illusion that 
because of progressive that that is solving this basic social problem. And the question, it seems to me that we are capable of answering, capable of solving, is the question of a governmental program of an anti-monopoly type, of a strong anti-monopoly element, in which billions, even trillions, can be spent for social needs and not for nuclear war. For the class and the pressure for black folk, the solution is to be found in ways other than the global policy of race. It must be associated with the fight against Reagan policy. In this to find the answer. It is possible to set up a commission to solve this problem, I think so. Are there people capable of coming up with this program? I think so. Is it urgent and immediate? I think so. So, what am I saying? That the building of the party means, first of all, an ideological, political approach to solving all questions of concern to them. You cannot, for example, develop a job program without a being based idea. Defining where is the enemy? Who is the enemy? What method has to be found to develop this struggle? What class forces must be united to advance this struggle? This is the role of the Congress. Right? So. Therefore, it seems to me the problem that we develop a common policy which is ideologically based in which we are working among people who are more than friendly to us who want our message who are asking where have we been I'm arguing against a concept which, after a discussion, proceeds to organize the fight in old, routine, bureaucratic way, and so forth. In this regard, one does not have to argue too much against right reference. But that too has to be argued against at time. What one has to be aware of nowadays to defend the purity of Marxism and Leninism, our party, is the fact that the enemy has assigned to the black community all of its agents. For what purpose? To discredit the party. And I just got through reading the April 28th issue of Frontline.
please turn the tape over at this point to get the rest of Comrade Winston's message on triple concentration in Harlem. the discussion question I think that uh, the subject matter is of extreme urgency for the party There's an editorial there in which they undertake to analyze the rainbow collision and analyze it in a way in which it becomes crystal clear that a false conclusion is being drawn this time that Jesse Jackson is representing a tendency in which Rainbow will become the leader of the anti-monopoly fight in this country and the role of labor has no significance, has no role except that it follows Rainbow. But why is that a choice? It is to offset an analysis which must come from the past, which gives clear leadership, which sees that Rainbow's orientation is towards the enlightened Democrats within the framework of the Democratic Party. How to recognize what's good and what's limited by that kind of approach is not examined. As it should be examined, the question of independent political action is played down. The question is, for the party to limit itself to that, when there is a crack up, as there will be, when the Democrat party becomes the mechanism through which everything is channeled, movement of struggle out there, where will Frontline be? Where will our party be in this kind of situation? 
They are the first class ideological and political problem here. We must be able to answer clearly and decisively. How, on the one hand, to recognize independence that is developing from within, independence that unites with outside tendencies of independence, and independence which brings together forces from without, finding allies everywhere. It's many-sided. Operating on this basis and reinforced on this basis the struggle itself for the issues of the people, we are unbeatable. Some people wouldn't want to do it. They want a hush hush policy on that. And that too is uh, understandable. Some people, for opportunist reasons, will not push it. But our party has a special task here. Now, I listened to Jim Steele this morning. Isn't it strange? Very strange. New direction. Rainbow. And rainbow. This is Jesse Jackson's thing. Uh... Really, uh, I should say, underestimating the significance of November, the significance of the congressional election. How is that possible? How can you see 88 without November? Are we in the struggle? Ideological. Do we have literature out there? ideologically on these kind of things masses in motion provide the basis not only for the development of communist cadre but militant progressive anti-imperialist labor cadre conscious of their mission conscious of their aim Enabling the party to develop the right kind of relationship <clears throat> which would enable party growth and with it increase in the mass activities in all people's organizations, church, etc., etc., etc. Five, nine, in 1903, the Bolshevik uh, party trial. A Bolshevik tendency trial. The party was found. Five years later, Lenin undertook to write against reformism, right and left. One of the important things which I would like for the current to read and study, first of all, volume. 15. And the article in which he deals with there. But I want to direct the attention of the comments to uh, page 37, the bottom line, and 38, where Lenin speaks about developed polemics against Bernstein. And in Lenin's language, he is perhaps the worst possible deviator of them all. Bernstein was developing the argument that the most important thing is the movement. Movement, said Bernstein, means everything. The final aim, nothing. 
finally, socialism, communism, the finally, the party, etc. Only the party would uh, lead in that kind of direction. The movement is everything. Now, this is a man from the left. There's a lot of talk about action, action, action. Should there be action? Of course. What kind of action? But not action, which excludes our ideology. Our practice, but an approach which sees our ideology is an integral part of the action itself, its development, and growing in the course of it all. Therefore, I occupy second place to none. When it comes, say, to organizing the movement for housing for black folks in Harlem. I can see the tenants' movement split three or four ways. I can see housing movements of non-struggle and non-involvement and other kinds of issues that concern black folk and heart. I could say the same thing about civil rights. I could say the same thing about education. I can see a standstill in terms of party growth. Isn't it time to ask the question, why do we stand still? Why do we not grow? We can give action of these individuals and in the distribution of the P, new papers, let us say. Thousands. But are these papers used as weapons to develop higher and more concrete forms of struggle? Or do we distribute them as things in themselves? Isn't this something to think about? as as his end point the decisive character of building the party and Lenin always speak struggle 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 and it's not party growth is not simply a question of Angela Davis coming into a meeting if we think of building the party solely on that basis, we're lost. What we got to think about is fighting for the needs of the people less some ultras, some demagogue will come along with stage demonstrations. They show a type of stuff the attempt to reach, speak to the galleries on issues rather than 
being a part of mass, organizing mass, to prevent mass action. But in doing things that way, we are unfortunately uh, faced with the situation which is directed against the party. There's not a community in Harlem or anywhere else in which on the basis of consistency, patience, organization, realistic program, in which progress cannot be made. Therefore, we are saying what? We are saying by triple concentration that the state, Harlem, and the nation will agree upon a common, common program that would take into account the formulation of a program to which it will recognize that District 65, which is auto, have a large part of its membership, if not the majority of its membership, living in Harlem, but who work downtown and earn their living downtown. And they go to their union downtown. Number two, that would recognize that left 99, some 7,500 members, a large well, hospital leaves a majority of black and Puerto Rican. Or in their livelihood downtown. But they live in Harlem. A large portion of them. When we think in terms of the Harlem population, we're thinking about men and women who work for a living, who have to live somewhere and do live somewhere. If we think in terms not only of 420, but other ASME locals, they also earn their living outside of the Harlem community, but live in Harlem. One could take TWA as well. Basic. No one in the world uh, can say that the leadership of TWA reflects the membership composition of that union. But these same people who are not adequately represented in leadership and determining policy also live in heart. But I think you can say that for garment in general. You may even say it for waterfront. You may say it for other unions as well. And when you speak of black folk, you're thinking in terms of a sector of the working class. A very important sector of the working class. And these same people who live in Harlem are members of choirs, church choirs, are members of uh, deacon boards, are members of usher boards, are teachers of BYPU, they're Baptists, they're Methodists. Many are Anglicans, Catholics.
the ideology is being formed. Now, I think that a triple policy of concentration has meaning only if Harlem is understood as meaning that they are to be found in unions within and without the Harlem community. Now, the problem. I told some comrades uh, the other day, I forget that one. One of our proud achievements was that of the role of the Communist Party in helping to elect Ben Davis to the city council. This was not a small task. No individuals, no matter who he or she may be, whatever that social background, no matter how brilliant, even popular, could ever have been elected to the city council without the greatest degree practical work, organization, based upon the idea of smashing segregation and Jim Crowism. So what happened? First, the fight to win proportional representation. Communists distinguish themselves in this particular fight. Secondly, Clayton Powell had higher goals and went on to achieve it. But he selected as the running mate because of the role of our party, the issues, so on and so on. Ben Davis. But even then, Ben Davis could not have been elected even after that. He did not have the Abyssinian Baptist Church with its 25,000 members as a base. No. First, Jobrowski had all, was already in the race running for city council. And for the first time in the city of New York, in the history of New York, you had a white <clears throat> communist declining to run in favor of a black man, Ben Davis, which immediately threw the full weight of the party all out behind Ben Davis. I don't think this is happening any else in the country. I think that it was then and only then that people like Ropes and Lena Horn and the whole gang, these were the days of the Democratic Front, the People's Front, a high point in the anti-war struggle. But the election of Ben Davis was a party. The party in unions. The party in all kinds of people's organizations. Masons, lodges of all kinds, churches. And this was one of the brightest possible periods. The party affected in that period, Harlem concentration, which was so conceived. It was not conceived of as a task of a handful of communists in Harlem. That would be totally wrong. That would be totally not understanding what is required 
then, or was required then, what is required now? No. What we are saying, therefore, is the fight within the union for correct policies will reflect itself concretely where black folks live. And you will not have a situation like you have among the teachers where black teachers are hostile to the teachers' union, A.F.T. and Jenka. No. Trade unionism must become the means by which white and black within the union and within the community is fighting for black equality. Can anyone say this happens now? Can anyone doubt the validity of what could happen if this was struggled for? What you? I repeat, musicians, hotel, TWA, Longshore, 1199, 65, Teachers, all of the, they must be distinguished by the fact that it's idle to talk about class unity without raising class consciousness and class understanding. We have this ideological problem to solve. We can only solve it by a common approach to the problem of how the perspective of 150 black communists is not only possible, it frankly it can be over-fulfilled in a very short period of time if we put our shoulders to the wheel in one direction And certainly, struggles, initiation of struggles, can put an end to bickering, backbiting, which always emerge from non-mass non activity, non-struggle, doesn't help the struggle at all. And to conceive of unity without this is not to see unity. Therefore, I think we must say that it is absolutely wrong only to see negative. Absolutely wrong to have any kind of hopeless, pessimistic outlook towards events. And it would be wrong to just sit and wait our answer has to be that of struggle for policy, struggle for organization, proper organization of our forces, recognizing that small numbers is but temporary. Proper approach, proper organization of our work can double, triple, quadruple, even more the membership of our party. Uh, we have to put an end to a situation where in our affairs we see few blacks. This does not correspond to what black people are thinking. And I think that uh, what is required is not only program, but to sit down and organize outlines for classes 
about the main things and the main way out. Why then all of this talk? It is to put before the Poor Bureau the necessity of agreeing to the concept of a triple concentration policy which would be wrong to be, be regarded as a, an organizational uh, process alone in which there is periodic consultation between the three bodies. But the unity of the three bodies in elaborating a program that can win. And within this framework, I think, we will not be found lacking in our ability to achieve great success. So I would like to, I would like to move. I deliberately didn't mention the anti apartheid. That's clear to everybody. That's the Yeah, it's a good for you, though. There's an editorial there.